welcome back. Episode three with Mallory Marie, and we're talking about wellness. But first, let's do a little recap. What did we talk about last week? Oh, that's right. One of my favorite brands of all time, Four Sigmatic. This is the company that took coffee and the power of mushrooms and combined the two to make an elixir of life that I am obsessed with. But you know what the coolest part about last week was? It was what you guys did with the information. Over the last seven days, I have been receiving so many messages, so many pictures of you guys buying it, trying it, trialing it, and loving it. And that right there is enough to make a girl cry because that is why I created this channel. If you've tried it, guys, thank you for your messages. Thank you for those pictures. Like I can't tell you how much it warms my heart and it makes me feel like I'm doing the right thing. So on to week three, what are we gonna talk about? Week one, we dabbled in mindset. Week two, we talked a little bit more about nutrition. Week three, I'm gonna take you guys into the land of fitness. I wanna see if you guys can guess it by me describing the environment that you walk into when you decide to take this class. So picture this, you're walking into a room and then poof, there's a wall of 105 degrees. And then you're walking to your spot in class and pa pa 40% humidity. And then as you make your way to your spot in class, that's when they start to ask you to move. Sounds pleasant, doesn't it? Can you guess what it is? Now, before we get into the thick of it and talk all things hot yoga, I want to actually just bring it back to the basics, just in case you haven't even gone to a regular yoga class. Now, a yoga class is essentially you walk into a room, you get onto your mat, which is like your own zone, right? Like your space. And then you're asked to go through approximately around 26 poses. Now, depending on which class you go to, it might be less, it might be more. You might be asking, Mal, poses? We posing? What kind of poses am I asked to do? It's yoga poses and each pose actually has a different benefit for your body. Three of the poses that I would say are most popular that you're gonna hear in probably any class are downward dog, warrior two, and oh God, my favorite, shavasana. Say it with me, shavasana. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like chaga, but it's shavasana, right? It's a good one. Now, here's what they look like. I could try to explain it to you, but I'll just show you. This might be a little awkward, but you'll get the picture on what these kind of poses are. So the first one is warrior two. You're gonna hear this one a lot in any class. We're just gonna make this work, okay? So warrior two, think of it as kind of like a lunge, right? Whew. So one foot in front of the other. Now you're doing this on a mat, not on a couch. It's a lot more stabler. And oh, there goes a the pillow. And then your arms go down up like this and then down. See that? That's not too bad. Now the next pose that you're gonna hear a lot is something called downward dog. It's like this. <sighs> really good for the lower back. You're just stretching, it's very great. Makes your face red like a tomato. And then one of my personal favorites is at the end of every class and that's, say it with me, Shavasana. And it looks something like this. So at the end of the class, they're gonna ask you to lay down just like this. This is Shavasana. And then they'll probably say something like Namaste and end the class. And you're gonna say Namaste right here because I'm tired. And before we get into the meat and potatoes of hot yoga, I wanna talk to you guys about what brought me to hot yoga. Mallory, the person that hates heat, loves cold. Let me do a little storytelling for you. Back mm, about six months ago, I was going ham every single day, six, seven times a week. Go, 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 go. You'd be like, Mallory, what are you training for? To be Rambo? Like what the heck is going on? And guess what? I was telling people, you can't slow me down. I'm not stopping. Well, you know what my body said to me? I'm going to slow you down. I'm stopping you. Boom. Torn meniscus. Right knee. Gone. Most people are scared of dying, drowning, clowns. I'm scared of a lack of mobility, okay? And my body literally shut down. A torn meniscus put me out of commission and I was like, what is happening? What did I do? I went to my doctor, I talked to my physical therapist and the hard truth is there are certain moves that I am never gonna be able to do again. Luckily, I don't need surgery, but I was at a place where I had to figure out something that I could do to maintain my fitness, to maintain my strength, but still go easy on the knees, hence, hot yoga. So let's talk about the benefits of hot yoga. First and foremost, elephant in the room, 
the sweating, okay? So right off the bat, you know that you are sweating so many toxins out of your body and you're literally drenched in sweats. So you are stimulating the largest organ in your body, which is your skin, okay? Now on top of that, yoga and the way that you move in these yoga classes address every muscle, every bone, every ligament because yoga practice is to really focus on functional training rather than athleticism. Some other major systems that are gonna be affected in a hot yoga class is definitely your circulatory system, which is responsible for blood flow, and then also your lymphatic system. Your lymphatic system is responsible for getting rid of toxic waste and all of this unwanted materials that accumulates in your body. So when you go into a hot yoga class, you are literally stimulating your circulatory and your lymphatic systems, which is essentially detoxing the hell out of your body and getting all of that stuff out. So that is why people do it, okay? And we're not just crazy. We don't just love the heat unless you live in Arizona, which ugh, I, get the, I can't do it, guys. I can't do it. Even though all hot yoga studios are a little bit different, they all have the same types of classes. And I'm going to tell you guys about the three most popular classes that I myself have tried. They're yin, flow, and sculpt. The first class is actually the very first class that I ever tried to kind of acclimate myself to the heat because I would rather be cold than hot. I'll be completely honest. And 105 degree weather, huh. And yin is a very gentle practice. So you are holding less postures, but just for longer periods of time. And the majority of the postures that I tried were actually either sitting or on the floor. So if you want to kind of ease your way into this hot yoga, then I would say look up a yin class. They are gonna be lower impact, less poses, holding those poses for longer. So you're not really gonna get your heart rate up as high as some of the other classes. So once you've mastered that yin class, try a flow class. You're definitely gonna get your heart rate up a little bit higher because the temperatures are higher, there's more poses, there's more movement, but this one you can really have that conversation with you and your body and really push yourself to new levels. So we've talked about yin, we've talked about flow, but there's another class that I gotta tell you about and this is for the crazy ones, okay? I see you, I know you, you overachiever. Oh, picture this, you're doing your yoga thing, but with weights. Yeah, I said it, weights, okay? Not only weights, faster tempo, lunges, squats, sometimes power jumps. I'm like, what the heck, this is crazy. And then this is not your meditation yoga, okay? It, it's not, it is like they got Beyonce playing. This one teacher actually played the Lion King song, like a techno version, the one that goes, na sabinya, for the warm up. And I was like, woo, let's go. And then halfway through that class, my heart rate was skyrocketing. And I was like, I need water, I need air. So yeah, not, the class I would recommend for your first experience with hot yoga at all. But for those overachievers that wanna work their way up, they got the yin, they got the flow, and they just wanna go, sculpt class, guys. It'll challenge your bodies in ways you never knew possible. And you might be sitting there being like, you know what, Mel, I think I wanna do this. I wanna do it for my body. I wanna check it out, I wanna try it. But you know what I'm gonna do for you? I'm gonna set you up, and not in a nasty way. I'm gonna set you up for success for your first class and tell you what to bring. So the first things that you wanna bring to your yoga class is your equipment. And in this case, it is a yoga mat and a yoga towel. Why a yoga towel? Because you are drenched in sweat. You are dripping all over the place. So this towel goes on top of this mat, so you're not playing slip and slide with your yoga mat throughout the entire class. Now, mentioning since we are dripping in sweat, not only do you wanna bring a towel for your mat, you also wanna bring a separate towel for your face. Why the heck would you want that? Do you guys remember in the beginning of this video when I told you guys about downward dog? It was the real awkward pose. If you need a refresher, it's, it looked a little something like this, okay? It's real, real awkward. Your face gets really red. So as you can tell, you're hanging upside down. Now imagine if you are hanging upside down, drenched in sweat. You know what happens? You start to drown. The water goes up your nose, okay? You are now drowning in your own sweat. So a face towel will literally save your life. And speaking of saving your life, you know what you also wanna bring? Your hydrated self to class. Let me say it again. Before you guys go to a hot yoga class, you want to already be incredibly hydrated. So for all of you guys out there that had a night, you know what I'm talking about? Like a Miley Cyrus back in 2013 kind of night. 
Okay, you know what I'm talking about. Don't go to hot yoga class. You will regret it. You will probably feel faint. You will be dehydrated like a mother. Mm -hmm. So bring your hydrated self to class. And on top of that, bring a water bottle. Because once again, you are sweating out a lot of fluids. So you want to be able to replenish them. And a couple other things that you definitely want to bring to your first class is one, flippy floppies. Ooh, those are dirty. Flippy floppies. They've been around for a while. Don't judge me. It's fine. So you definitely want to bring flip flops because nobody likes to put on socks on sweaty feet at the end of a class. So the flip flops will add comfort once you leave the class. Speaking of comfort after the class, bring yourself a change of clothes. Nobody wants to be driving home in their own filth. Get some clean, dry clothes on before you drive home, especially ladies. It is a health hazard. It gets a little, I hate the word, moist, okay? So you just don't want to do it. I'm going to spare you the details, but all I got to say is do yourself a favor and bring some extra chonies. Right. And the final step of preparation as far as like what to bring to class, you know what I'm going to say? A clean face. All right, that's right. Ladies and gentlemen who prefer to wear a lot of makeup during the day, wipe that shit off before you go to your first class because you will regret it. You can walk into class looking cute, but you ain't gonna walk out of class looking cute. And if you decided to wear your makeup in class, you gonna look like this. That ain't cute. So you know what you need to bring, but Mal, what do I wear? The answer is nothing. <laughs> I'm just kidding. As little as humanly possible. And I will tell you why, guys. Obviously, keep it PG-13. Keep it decent, kids. But the reason why is because, guys, if you show up in one of those hot yoga classes and you have those long sleeves and those long pants and you're looking real cute, you are literally going to suffocate yourself, okay? I want you to remember the temperatures. Remember the temperatures. 105 degrees. 40% humidity. I myself like to wear a sports bra and yoga pants. And, and let me tell you something though, it was not always like that. I was very, very self-conscious. I mean, you are doing some crazy things with your legs and with your arms and it's just awkward positions. So I was the girl wearing like basketball shorts and a baggy t-shirt because I was like, oh my God, don't look at me while I'm doing these awkward poses. But that's a thing. Yoga communities, there's something about them. They are some of the most supportive and confidence building communities I have ever been a part of. So wear what you need to wear to get yourself through the class because it is already gonna put you in a very intense environment. You want to be as comfortable and as mobile as you possibly can. I'm gonna have a soapbox moment right now. <clears throat> have pride in your body now, not when you lose 10 pounds, not when you get back at your ex, not when you find the love of your life. I want you to have pride in your body now. Have pride in yourself. Did you make the decision to go to a hot yoga class? Yes. Did your body get you there? Yes. Are you doing something good for your body? Hell yeah. Then have pride. Wear what you want. Own your body now. Ooh, okay, I digress. Getting off the soapbox. Back to funny Mal. So if you're thinking, you know what, this class, I might want to try it. Why not? The benefits are great. Let's give it a whirl. Then I'm proud of you. But one more thing I got to say, don't take yourself so seriously. Nobody gets to skip day one. And I'm going to tell you some stories about my classes and the type of characters that I get to meet. The tidal wave is actually the person who just seems to sweat more than humanly possible. Like we're all 80% water. This person must be 100% water because they are just drenched, okay? They have a literally a moat of sweat around them after the class. And you know how I know this person exists? Because it's me. That's right. I said it. I'm going to admit it. I am the sweatiest person in class. I have no idea why. Maybe I've got like hyperactive glands or something. Another thing you guys should know about these yoga classes is they ask you to match your movement with your breath. So you are flowing in cadence with your inhales and your exhales. And it's amazing because it gets you to mindfully breathe, you know, be more aware of our breath. So they'll tell you to inhale, hold it at the top, take a little sip, exhale with a sigh. And on that side, people are like, ooh, I don't want to do that. That sounds real culty. Everybody's just breathing. And it just sounds really weird, but I'm telling you, just go for it, okay? Let it out breathe. And you want to know why I say that? Because there will always be somebody that breathes louder than you. And this is the breather. Okay. The instructor will be like, breathe in. They're like, 
violently. Like, how is there still oxygen left in this room? And then at the end, when they're like, exhale with a sigh, instead of a sigh, this person actually lets out an opera. <sighs> and you're like, whoa, okay. <laughs> so that's how you breathe. That's great. So guys, when they tell you to breathe and exhale with a sigh, just go for it. Feel into it. Do what feels good for your body because there will always be the person in class that wants to be the loudest. And this person, the breather, ended up turning into the baby. And let me tell you the story about the baby. So just when I thought there is no way that this person could possibly get any louder, it's just not gonna happen. Like there's no way, I'm gonna let them do their practice. This is great, I'm getting in my zen, it's fine. And then we got to the floor series and we got into this one pose called happy baby. It looks like this. You know when you're changing a baby's diaper, but they grab onto their feet? Well, it's just like that, but we're all adults in a hot, sweaty room, and then we're just walking back and forth. It's great for the lower back. And then, hey, you can check out my cool socks. Sloth socks, born to be mild. What up? You might be getting the picture of what happens. You know, this is towards the end of the class. We're releasing a lot of toxins. The breather gets down to be the baby and puts their legs up like this, pulls on the legs to go into the full position, and then I say, sir, did you just pass gods? And that is a competition I am not gonna go into, but the moral of the story, guys, is don't take yourself so seriously. Breathe loud, exaggerate your movements. It is your practice, okay? Get into it. Before I sign off, it's my favorite part, your guys' questions. And the first question that I get all the time is, Mallory, what if I can't stand the heat? Cause I get it, it's 105 degrees at 40% humidity, it's uncomfortable. But one thing that you can always remember throughout the entire class, they do ask you to stay in the room for the entire 45 minutes, 90 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever class you signed up for. They do ask you to stay in it because going in and out of the class will shock your system and do more damage than good. But what you can always do is revert to laying on your mat. If you get dizzy, sit down. If you get faint, lay down. You know, if your first class is just you taking like a power nap for like 60 minutes because you were just acclimating to this heat, do it. Do what your body tells you to do. Do not push yourself too crazy in these classes because it's already putting you in such an intense environment. The other question that kept coming up on my Instagram conversations was more of a concern. I'm not flexible enough. I don't have enough balance. I can't do yoga. Can we remember why Mallory started going to hot yoga in the first place this year? It's because she was injured because I was doing all of the weights and none of the recovery. So my body was literally so tightly wound and stiff and not flexible. And that is the beautiful thing about yoga. Yoga meets you where your body is right now. Okay. So don't compare yourself to Sally next door to you who's been doing this for 15 years, okay? She's doing her own practice. You are there for you. You are there for your body. So with that being said, Mal, who should do it? Who should take this class? My opinion? everybody okay yeah you and you and definitely you because i believe that everybody can benefit from a yoga class especially when it's a hot yoga class but don't just take my word for it i'm going to introduce you to one of my favorite instructors with core power yoga and i want you to hear what she says about her experience with hot yoga and the benefits that she believes everybody can get yeah, me too oh god this is great okay <laughs> hey guys what's up so it's me mallory and i just finished Bree's hot yoga class this is Bree, <laughs> and she's going to tell you why she thinks that you should do hot yoga uh, well, for me, I like to practice hot yoga because it offers a mental challenge, it stimulates your blood flow, it kind of gets everything moving, um, and it just brings awareness to your body when you slow down and you find that breath, that rhythm, that ease, um, and just creates that nice mind-body connection so that you can feel good in your day. Yeah. Absolutely. And I'm going to start <laughs> to stand further away from her because I smell disgusting. <laughs> me too. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, guys, here, here first. Try it out. Core yeah. power yoga. You'll love it now know a little bit more about hot yoga. You now know about what the class is, 
what the benefits are, what to wear, what to bring, the three types of the most popular classes out there, as well as some of the characters that you just might meet on your day one, including the Tidal Wave, AKA me, the sweatiest person in class and proud of it. On a more serious note, guys, get out there, okay? Be brave, be bold, try something new for yourself, okay? And when you do, and I didn't say if, I said when you try your first hot yoga class, send me a message. I wanna hear all about it. I wanna hear about all the times that you stumbled. I wanna hear about all the times that you lost track about what was going on in class. I wanna hear about the funniest stories and maybe some funny characters that you guys got to see because guess what? That's the beautiful thing about having your day one at trying something new is you get to be a beginner again and it's only gonna get better after that. So get out in the world, continue to love yourself a little bit more, continue to work on yourself a little bit more and I'll see you next week for episode four. Do I stop smiling now? Whoa. Ah, mouth exercises. Ooh, ooh. Facial expressions. <laughs> what? But let's do a little recap about last episode. What did we last episode? When? You guys follow me on Instagram, Mallory underscore Marie plug. Then you know, I, oh gosh, my paper. Hello, 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 hello. All right, that keep people coming inside. Coming, oh God, don't say that. But you might be asking, Mal, what kind of poses am I gonna be asking to do? Ask it, ask it, ask it, with Mallory Marie and oh no 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 no. You guys buying it, trying it, trialing it, because that's what this channel is all about. I want to. What's going on? So yeah, flow classes are gonna be more postures. Hello, paperwork. Don't be so loud. <laughs> Whoa, hello, <laughs> that's a lot. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back, Mallory Marie. You want to bring a clean face. For all of you ladies and gentlemen that prefer to wear makeup, do not wear makeup on the way. Why did that accent come from? Whoa, <laughs> awkward. I wasn't even recording. Uh... <laughs> You can guess what it is. It's yoga and it's hot. Shocker. But let me just kind of. It's really close. Oh my God. I was like, oh, I can't see. Come on.